measuring segments, section 1-3. Our purpose in this section is to figure out how to measure the length of a line segment. We're going to do that by using the ruler postulate and the segment addition postulate by differentiating between congruent se segments and equal distances. So here we have postulate 1-5, which is the ruler postulate. It states that the distance between points A and B, written as AB, is the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates of A and B. Looks like that. What does that mean? Well, it means that since A is at negative 2 and B is at 4, you take the difference between them, and whatever that number is, you take its absolute value. So in this case, negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6, but its absolute value is positive 6. 4 minus negative 2 is positive 6. Its absolute value is positive 6. So note it didn't matter which way I put the point in, it came out to the same answer. A thought to add to this idea of distance is that if you drive backwards, do you identify as going a negative distance? You don't. You'd still list it as positive. So distances are always a positive number, and so we always take the absolute value. Congruent segments are simply line segments that have the same length. Congruent line segments are usually indicated by drawing the same amount of little tick marks in the middle of the segments perpendicular to the segments. So notice this has two tick marks perpendicular to AB, and this has two tick marks perpendicular to CD. Because they both have two tick marks, it indicates that they are congruent, so segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Notice this is the congruence symbol. It has an equal sign in it because we are talking about segments that are the same amount. Using the number line above, answer the following questions. So how long is AB? Well, AB, you count the units. This is one unit. That's the space between the tick marks. Two units, three units, four units. So AB is four units long. And what about BA? Well, as we remember from the previous um, instruction. AB and BA are the same segments, so they better have the same length, so they're both four. BC, let's count those. It's one, two, three, four, so BC is length four. And since BC and AB have the same length, their segments are considered congruent, so A, segment AB is congruent to segment BC. Now, if BE were to, is to equal to, where is point E located on the number line? Well, where would point E have to be? So if I'm at B and I go two units, there's one, two. That looks like it lands me at three. But what if I go the other direction and I go one, two? That looks like it lands me at negative one. So E is either located at three or it's located at negative one. It's your turn. Turn off or pause the video before moving forward so that you can do your work and then check your answers. Good luck. Welcome back. Did you get SU equals 14 and TU equals 2, TV equals 6, and that R should be located at 2 so that SR and TR, the segments, are congruent? If not, we should probably talk. The segment addition postulate states that if three points A, B, and C are collinear, remember that means they all lie on the same line, and B is in between them, then AB and BC is equal to the length of AC. So the sum of the parts is equivalent to the whole. So looking here at this figure here on the left, FE plus ED is equal to the length of FD. That gives me the following equation negative 12 plus 2x plus x minus 8 equals 10. So I'm going to combine my like terms. I'm going to put my x's together and my numbers together on the left side, which produces 3x minus 20, still equal to 10. Then I'm going to move that 20 to the other side by adding it to both sides. Makes it go away on the left and makes it appear on the right. So that gives me 3x equals 30. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. That gives me that x is equal to 10. Looking over here at my diagram on the right, I'm looking at PQ plus QR equals PR, which is the length of this blue segment right here. That gives me the following equation. 3 plus 2x plus 22 equals x plus 17. 
I would combine my like terms. That gives me 2x plus 25 equals x plus 17. Then I would subtract x from both sides so I can get my x's together. That gives me x plus 25 equals 17. And I would subtract that 25 so I can get x alone. That's going to give me x equals negative 8. It is your turn. Give it a shot. Pause this video. Welcome back. Did you get x equals 4? If not, we probably need to look at your math. Comparing segments. To determine if two segments are congruent, we simply find the length of each and compare. If they are equal lengths, the segments are congruent. Are AC and BD congruent? Are segments AC and segments BD congruent? Well, let's look at their length. So AC is right here. So that's 2, 4, 6, and one more is 7. Notice the increments are 2. So AC is length 7. BD or DB is 2, 4, 6, 7. So BD is 7. Therefore, segment AC is congruent to segment BD. A midpoint divides a segment into two congruent parts. Below point B is the midpoint of segment AC. Therefore, segment AB is congruent to segment BC. Notice the tick marks that indicates that's the case. A segment bisector is a point, line, ray, or other segment that intersects a segment at its midpoint. So AB, that's a B down there, is a bisector. It bisects the segment PQ. Since it cuts it in half, PF is congruent to FQ. Using the given information, find the missing variable for the line below. Q is the midpoint of PR, so I know that PQ and QR are the same length. That gives me the following equation, 6x minus 7 equals 5x plus 1. So to solve for x, I would move all of my variables to the one side. That's going to give me x minus 7 equals 1. Then I'm going to move 7 over by adding it. That's going to give me x equals 8. Looking at this diagram right here, U is the midpoint of TV. Tell me what X is. Pause your video. Did you get X equals 3? I hope so. If you have questions, make sure you bring them to class. See you soon.